I drive my car up to the lake As if there's someone to awake I haven't been to bed for days I live in a twilight haze And I set my heart to the setting sun And I hope But um, look, <laughs> it's, all, it's all gonna work out well. Hey, um, welcome to the podcast, guys. Aaron and Steve, you're both from uh, New Zealand Storm Chasers, and um, you guys have a pretty incredible little Facebook page, Facebook group set up. Um, now, um, there's I noticed there's like 30, 32,000 people on that group. There is 32,000 people yeah. on the Storm Chasers group page, which Steve heads up, basically. Yeah. Steve was the inspiration behind creating that one. <laughs> right. Um, going back to the uh, like uh, nucleus of the issue, the yeah. Storm Chasers, uh, the New Zealand Storm Chasers page itself, uh, that was, uh, man, was that 10, 11, 12 years ago? Yeah. yeah. It was like 2012 or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, yeah, I started that way back then, and then, yeah, at some point there was a group created. Oh. Yeah. And, yeah, the group's got more people on it than the page. Well, what I've <laughs> noticed is um, there's, um, there's a lot of interest in the weather, right? There is. Yeah. And do you guys, because you could go so many different uh, areas with um, that, because I've noticed there's a lot of um, sunrise, sun, sunset <laughs> pictures, there's all these different things going on, rainbows. Yeah, we've got, um, we've got a set of rules. We're not allowed to post it, but then... Um, there also isn't a lot of severe weather, so you've got to yeah, get people's interest, right. interest yeah, yeah, going. Yeah. So yeah. And people love double rainbows. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're right. It's hard to <laughs> it's hard to not take a photograph of a double rainbow. Are your ear, earphones? You might just cut out a wee bit. <clears throat> uh, technical issue. So um, all good. I can just yeah. You can I'll still hear us, right? Yeah. Um, okay, Aaron. Tell us how you got into it. Steve, tell us how you got into it. Um, mm-hmm. Who's going to go first? Who sort of um, the weather in general. Um, I remember the, the 1992 snowstorm. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. I was like seven years old. Mm-hmm. And we lived up Kennedy's Bush Road at the time. And we had about half a foot of snow outside. And I remember it was late in the night and there was a bit of elusive snow thunder. So snow thunder is when you get a thunderstorm with snow. Ah. So that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, I saw the curtains flashing. And, you know, that was probably my earliest weather memory as such. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, percolated the interest, percolated uh, since we're in a coffee house here, mm. cafe. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that was that. And then, 2002, I always liked thunderstorms from that point onwards, but it was just like a bit yeah. of a mild interest. And then 2002, 27th of October, there was a tornado that dropped down just south of Christchurch. A huge big thunderstorm moved through Christchurch that day. And uh, that was a supercell thunderstorm, I believe, which is one of these rare beasts that you get in America, drops the tornado, does all that sort of carry on. And, yeah, there was a tornado that dropped uh, down near Taitapu. Taitapu, for those who are, like, yeah. Yep. Anyway, and uh, I saw that on TV, and uh, some guy filmed it, and I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I remember when I saw it at the time, it looked like this huge big thing, and I didn't see cows going around the outside or anything no. like that, but I, it looked massive. When I actually saw the footage, in retrospect, back, I was like, it was this thing way in the distance, like a thing coming down like that, and I was like, oh. But my first impression was like, yeah. Ugh. yeah. And um, at the time, I, I went onto the net, and I was like, you know, just the early version of the net, whatever that was, and yeah. I was trying to find out, you know, who filmed this thing? And I found this very primitive weather forum uh, run by a guy called Brian Hamilton uh, up near Auckland. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that was called. But uh, there was a guy called John Gould on there, and he filmed that tornado. And I found him somehow. And uh, he actually started a thing. He's like the godfather of storm chasing in New Zealand, if there were to be such a thing. John right. Gould, um, he lived in Christchurch. He was a train driver most of his life. Interesting fact, he drove the last train 
uh, to Methven when that line was still open. Oh, wow. But now he lives in Geraldine. Uh, I think John's in his 60s, maybe 70s now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I went and saw him, and, man, he had footage going back for 15, 20 years of thunderstorms he had uh, filmed. And So that's how my whole thing started, and... Uh, Fast forwarding, I eventually became a weather forecaster, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I've worked for a company called Blue Skies Weather mm-hmm. for four years under Tony Truenard. I uh, had a bit of a break, came back into it, and worked for uh, Phil Duncan, weatherwatch.co.nz, and I, man, I worked for them for quite a long time now. And uh, then, yes, the New Zealand Storm Chasers page uh, eventually um, was born, and uh, I guess mainly the whole thing about it is just a share of people about, you know, this interest and a lot of people interested in it, and mm. there you go. Cool. Thanks, Aaron. So, uh, so, and Steve, what about, how about yourself? Oh, very similar, I guess. As a child, I remember watching a thunderstorm off the west coast, sitting on the beach, watching a big storm out at sea, and it sort of intrigued me a bit, and then probably don't have as much interest as what sort of Aaron had early on, but then Aaron didn't drive when we were in high school. We both went to high school together. That is true. Uh, I see. And... Um, Aaron really wanted to go chase these thunderstorms and that. So he conv- <laughs> basically convinced me and paid me petrol money yeah. to drive them out to, th- you know, take some photos of them and yeah. sort of like, I guess it's like a little bit like hunting or fishing or something, a bit of a thrill of a catch. So you go out and you, you know, it's blue skies and everyone tells you there's no thunderstorms today, then, I don't know, the afternoon, storm pops up and gets some nice photos or something. It was, it was quite fun to early, early on and sort of just led from there and then yeah. ended up chased lots of storms and thousands yeah. of kilometres and... Yeah. Cause, so the idea is to basically uh, usually take footage of the film and the weather and um, a- as it kind of comes in and breaks and then experience it as well. Like, do you stick around to experience it? Yeah, or is it I think just kind of grab the photographs and get the hell out no, of it? No, I like to experience it all, like big <laughs> hail and, you know, just a bit of a... Yeah, it's quite exciting. Yeah. Um, there's a big group of us, just sort of like three of us that sort of go out quite a bit, another guy, Mike Stewart. Um, mm-hmm. He's really excited and sort of... Yeah, we get get quite into it. It gets um, yeah, it gets quite exciting. Also, the storms here aren't that severe, really. Like, um, there's not sort of that dark side of the weather where there's a lot of like damaging tornadoes and everything. No. I actually um, like the infrequency of yeah. our storms because you know, I've got other interests. So like, yeah. other things I want to get up to. Yeah. I do like that. In America, it'd be like Steve. We'll get into that because Steve's means in America. He's taken it to the next level. Mm. It's day after day after day, <clears throat> night after night. You know, but at least here you chase a storm. Sweet hours, you get a break. I'll do something else. Yeah, <laughs> very rarely do we ever chase like two days in a row. We'll have storms two, two days in a row. Right. So you kind of like have a bit of a build up. You're excited. You sort of yeah. Make sure the missus is giving me the afternoon off, and yeah. you know, and then. Um, and is that so? That's unique. So, t- well, tell me what is unique unique about the um about New Zealand's weather in that sense um you know being a like I don't want to make out that we're super small but we're an (laughs) island nation and does that does that well it must what is our weather like our weather is the pattern is as follows it's very repetitive (laughs) (laughs) anti-cyclone then north to northwesterly airflow front moves in from the southwest front moves north southwesterly change in behind Anti-cyclone moves in behind that, and then the padding repeats. Right. That's the <laughs> rough shot of it. Yeah. Unless you're in a La Nina situation, yep. where you get a lot of lows, depressions from the north quite often, easterly air flows, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. rain into the north and east of New Zealand. We're in a, uh, El Nino, I believe, at the moment, so the pattern's more west-southwest, and we'd have, you would have noticed this summer, it's been very dry, very hot in the east, that's classic El Nino, basically. Yeah. Yeah, our, our weather in New Zealand is uh, generally speaking quite changeable, thankfully, uh, this summer it sort of calmed down quite a bit. You would have noticed that, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just after Christmas, basically, it sort of came on cue. Uh, into January there, yeah, the, the weather just settled down. We've got anti-cyclones. We still have fronts come through, and mm. we got a few thunderstorm chances out of that. But it calmed down a lot. But before that, it's been diabolical for the last year and a half, basically. And uh, <laughs> But it's been good in the sense that, you know, there's been a lot of rain for... Uh, Canterbury, uh, our last summers, the previous two summers, we've had a, yeah, quite a bit of rain and uh, we haven't had to worry about dry weather and fires on the poor hills and all that sort of stuff. <coughs> but now we've struck that dry weather and uh, the result is another fire on the poor hills. Probably yeah. some of it, who knows. Yeah. Um, so that, that predictability, um, is that why we are sort of perhaps, yeah, we don't get see those extremes? Like, we don't perhaps have to worry too much about something... Like, weather isn't, what I'm saying, it, it isn't totally unpredictable, and um, that's what your job is, to understand it. Um, 
in America, tell me the difference between what happens in America and what happens in New Zealand. So ours is somewhat predictable. Is the same predictability happening in America as well? Actually, in a sense, like I mean, what I said there was a rough snapshot of like what yeah. goes on with the weather. But uh, our weather, I, I, I believe, would be probably more unpredictable in, in some sense. Right. The severity yeah. of the stuff is a lot is a lot less. Yeah. America's severity yeah. is a lot more. But our weather is a little bit more chaotic. Yeah, um, being as you say, a couple of small islands near the Roaring Forties, near the Roaring Forties. That's what yeah. they call them, uh, and all that sort of business. Yeah, the, the weather can be quite changeable, uh, windy. But uh, so in yeah. America, it's just the land mass that provides some of the the energy, the yeah. energy. Right. Yeah, basically, it's yeah. a big frying pan. It's like it just gets that, it just gets the energy from the sun. Right, it's basically as simple as it is, yeah. and then you get that combination of the cold air coming down from the uh, north. Yep, and it just creates a moisture so, so the, from, the, from the Gulf as well, and it's just a, it's just a, everything's bigger. Yeah. <laughs> like, so the anatomy of a storm in New Zealand and the anatomy of a storm in America is essentially the same thing happening, but just on different scale. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And like the upper um, sort of the maximums in America will be bigger than here, mm. so. The amount of instability and everything like that would be much greater than we can ever get because we just don't have the land mass. Or I see. So, sort of, so yeah. tell me, what did you see in America? Oh, so I've been uh, first went in two thousand and seven. There's a group of us actually from that forum that Aaron joined. I think I looked back the other day. I joined it in two thousand and three. Then in two thousand and seven, it was um, maybe a group of six or seven of us went over. Um, and it was on my first a sort of international trip, actually, sort of taste of America. Went there for four weeks, and then we chased for sort of about three weeks and. I've been back, I think, four times now chasing storms. Mm-hmm. So more recently, I've been back with um, taking sort of people interested from the group. So normally, I sort of chuck out a couple of posts and see who's interested, and people sort of hit me up, and we do like a bit of a cost share sort of right. sort of trip over, I sort of sort of organise it myself. But we, yeah, there's a few people have gone back a few times as well, but mostly it's sort of bucketless people who just want to experience a tornado or just see America a little bit, see a different mm. side of it. Mm. So I think I've been back four, four times, I think now, and then I'm going back. In a, couple of months again for two weeks there's a group of four or five of us going over but yeah I think I've seen a, I was trying to think on the way over actually um, probably about 30 tornadoes I think I've seen now in Gosh. the states so then thousands of lightning strikes and just huge storms and yeah. well, I mean, the, the biggest day was um, what was it May 24th 2016 we saw about 10 to 12 tornadoes in one day around Dodge City in Kansas and that was a pretty incredible day <coughs> um but yeah, no, it's, it's just a hobby that's sort of grown and then you know, as sort of children come along and things, I've sort of got to cut back a little bit and go for shorter trips and make sure I, yeah. I guess that's why it's called Dodge City. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, kind of uncanny, so isn't you, it? So do you jump, go over to America about May? Yep, yeah, yeah, so generally season. mid-May, sort of that's sort of the peak season. It's also, the problem is it's the peak season for storms, but it's the peak season for people chasing and so you come from New Zealand where you go chase a storm and you'll see nobody. You might see a farmer who's out and wants to have a yarn to you or something, but over there there's like like thousands of chases. But the, the good thing is the scale of everything's huge. The yeah. storm could be the size of Canterbury almost, you know, like the yeah, actual wow. cl- like the thunderstorm, but mm. the, where the, everyone's concentrated in one little area. So you get convoys of, well, I'll say dozens or even up to like 100 cars just still <laughs> all these chases. Mm. But mm. then you also feel like you're in the middle of nowhere because you're literally, you know... In the middle of nowhere in Texas, you know, Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, It must be quite, like, that's a unique way to see um, the country. Yeah, you see see a part of America you just never would see otherwise. Yeah. A lot of small towns, really friendly people, just like lovely people, real small communities, and people are excited to meet someone from New Zealand. Yeah. You know, yeah. People tell me that I'm part of Australia. And it's like I know I'm from New Zealand. I'm not Australian, but they'll try and convince me that I am. And or, or, you know, <laughs> gas stations are like I've never met a foreigner, and you're like, and they're like, oh, but I've met Mexicans, but they don't count. <laughs> it's just it's just a different part of the. Oh, you just by Mexican flatmates. Yeah, <laughs> um, there's a yeah. It's just a different side of America, and it's, it's, I, I quite enjoy it. Sort of like become a bit of a second second home, let's say. You know. Yeah, I've travelled a lot a while ago and did Route sixty six, and um, yeah, it was fantastic. We love the people, and um, uh, don't recall seeing any storms. We drove through a. Um, there was a heavy downpour. There was one storm, and yep. um, I was on the you know the freeway, or whatever they call it, the interstate, and um, it was. I was. 
very uncomfortable driving. You know, you could only see a couple of feet away from you. Yeah. And it just appeared that no one slowed down apart no. from me. A, People were roaring mad. past and I was like, Because <laughs> the, the rain was just so ridiculously yeah. solid. Um, and it came yeah, they don't out, slow down for much, really. <laughs> came out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the old, the, uh, that place in America is that sort of the, the utopia of storms. Is it yeah, place to go yeah. So you've got the Tornado Alley. Which is sort of you yep. got your sort of Texas, um, Oklahoma, Kansas sort of area in sort of April, May, June. Um, you've got another area called like Dixie Alley, which is slightly earlier in the season and out more to the east. And then later in the season, which I guess is like your June, July, you go further north to like the Dakotas and Wyoming, Montana. Mm. And then Canada as well also gets quite a lot of storms. And in America, they have so in these places, do they have bunkers like uh, basements where they can? Uh, yeah, I think a lot of newer places have to. It's like almost part of their building code is that right. you put in a um, you know a basement. Well, a lot of places have basements or a storm shelter. Yeah, um, I think it's the older places that don't. In the mm. trailer parks, um, they sort of got no protection to do no. anything. And neither. Presumably with the storm chasers, you don't. No, take but your yeah, basement. storm chasers. It's like people are like, oh, it's such a dangerous hobby, do you know? You, but actually, it's like you're more aware than anybody of what's going on. Mm. So you can be incredibly close to something so severe, but you you know exactly what's going on. You know, you're you know, you're always thinking about your escape path, your roads in and out. You know, have I got north south options? You 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 think quite you know differently. And say, if you're on a holiday, you're going from A to B, and you drive through a storm, you just drive through the storm. Yeah. But if you're a storm chaser, you're thinking about a lot more stuff that. Mm. So very rarely do storm chasers actually get caught out. And those that do are probably those that are wanting to take more risks than, say, others. Well, I'm quite happy to sit back and watch a tornado in the distance because I want nice photos. Yeah. I don't need to be right up for that real close thrill. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there seems to be a lot more flourishing online of all of this content. Um, yeah. You know, uh, different tropical storms and what have you. Yeah, um, yeah, I went through some of this content while you know, studying up a little bit for this. And, of course, you've got the... Um, Dudes in the armoured tanks, the armoured cars, yeah, the locked down the spikes. And they go well, Reed, and check data. Is the the most popular and well known storm chaser? Has he had that Discovery um, show? Well, it was called, just called Storm Chasers, I think, on Discovery right. a few yeah. years ago. And a lot of people watch that and get quite excited about. You know. And he contacted you for some footage once. Yeah, and no, so he has shared one of our videos once. I think he even paid me a check from YouTube, paid him oh, 100 sweet. bucks or something. Yeah. So we're not in it for the money, we don't really make <laughs> no, any money from it. Um, if anything, if it was a business, the tax department wouldn't like us. Yeah. Because um, we don't sell anything. Well, we do. Tr- we have tried in the past, but... Merchandise? Or? Uh, well, yeah, Aaron's got yeah. a t-shirt on, he's on Storm yeah. Chasers. Oh, it's one of those funny things, it's like, people contact us, it's like, oh, we love a t-shirt, we love this and that, we love some stickers. Yeah. And then it's like... Up. yeah. I get tired in the evenings, and then I just don't get around to doing yeah, it. And yeah. also, getting T-shirts printed is harder than I thought. I've contacted a couple of companies recently, and they're, um, I think our orders, the way we want to do orders, we don't know how many we want. Yeah. You know, we sort of very small numbers. I think we sold about 30 last time, yeah. which I was actually quite surprised with. But our page is sort of two or three times bigger now, so hopefully there's a few more people. But, yeah, good reminder, I need to, need to try and get the T-shirts done again. Yeah. Hey, um, now tell me about... Because... Having a little espresso bar, and just in the world in general, I've been thinking about how much weather plays a role in our lives and how much people talk about it and they plan around it um, and there's a little bit of superstition about it. It really impacts us humans heaps. And, um, you know, people come in, often the first thing we'll talk about is um, the weather. Um, Mm -hmm. One of the things that often comes up is um, the 10-day forecast. All right. <laughs> is it, what's the deal with that? Like how Do you mean much, like apps and stuff? Sorry? Do you mean apps? Or? Yeah, like the 10-day forecast. When you see a 10-day forecast and people are planning events, what's the, what's the, what's the give? Like, uh, tell us, Aaron, how accurate is that 10-day forecast? Uh, three to four days out, you're, you're pretty good. Yeah. Five to six days out, you're starting to get into, like, uh, not so solid territory. Yeah. And then beyond that, it starts to become guesswork, really. Mm. There are times when patterns and, and the weather models, for some reason, they lock on um, and they, they are quite consistent. And, yeah, sure enough, 10 days out, it's sort of come through and it's been pretty much what it said. Mm. But the 
the hit rate, the percentage rate of, of that, you know, it just goes down a lot the further you go out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Well, often we, yeah, that's just something we always talk about with people, eh? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's micro... Sorry, guys, my, my, my headphones have dropped out. I normally see the headphones. Yeah, you can still hear me and everything? Yeah, 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 yeah. we can still hear you. Um, yeah, I remember when I was planting trees in the Canterbury foothills you know, a few years ago, um, you lit, just have that four seasons in one day thing. It'd just be scorching hot. Right, And right. then it'd be raining, then it'd be hailing, then it'd be snowing, and then it'd be scorching hot again in, you know, in half an hour. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those micro-events... Um, It'd probably be a lot due to... Um if you were in the foothills quite a bit there, like a lot of weather pass, passing over from the west, I guess. Yep. And it's sort of, yeah, coming over from the west and depending on the strength of the front moving through or whatever like that, yeah, it, it'll, it'll spill over into the foothills and once it moves through, it clears up again. And yeah. It's a bit like a, a but, wave and a storm bashing up against a brick wall or seafront or something and occasionally a bit comes over and gets yeah, you. Yeah, I see. I think you described it as a that, skate, skateboard ramp. I watched Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a good, good analogy. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's in terms of thunderstorms like that, that often form, you know, for the West Coast. Um, orographic uplift, you call it. So, yeah, the, the winds are sort of coming in ahead of the front at like a... Yeah, another angle anyway. Uh, from the north or northwest. Actually, the winds, can, the airflow can be like a northwest, but when they hit the, uh, the Alps, they can get like diverted down... Um, much like a rock in a stream, you know, the, the water conforms to the shape of the rock, sort of, in a sense. Yeah. So, so it comes down as a north or northeast. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, anyway, you get the front moving through, but there's just a lot of forcing there, and um, it can, yeah, be exactly like a skateboard, go up a ramp, and whoosh, clouds go up. And, but if there's too much stability in the atmosphere, uh, yeah, thunderstorms don't always result. There can be a lot of rain. But, yeah, you need that instability for thunderstorms. Mm. Yeah. Right. Because there's around New Zealand, there's like so it's unique to the area. Like Canterbury has its nor'westers, mm. um, you know, and the west coast has certain things. Yeah, the, um, the west coast quite often gets like you may have heard reports over the years of little tornadoes or something along yeah, the west coast and things yeah. like that. Yeah, I think I think um, they often form because of that north northeasterly airflow coming down the mountains like that, and then you get that like a front coming through in the southwest, and the winds are coming in opposite directions, and they just create spin ups. Yeah. And you get little tornadoes and things like right. that. Yeah, we were there, there was a tornado in Greymouth quite a few years ago now. When yeah. was that to remind me? Oh, two thousand six, yeah. something yeah, like January that. Yep. Yeah. And um, I think we were we were on the west coast like a week or two before that, <laughs> trying to chase a storm or something. Yeah. But it's notoriously difficult to chase over there because you're often in just cloudy conditions and it's yeah. wet, and you can't really photograph. Yeah, anything. people say like you should go to the coast to chase storms. That's where the bigger storms are. But there's like one road that goes north and south. There's yeah. not many options to. Oh, yeah, there's more than one road. Sorry, yep. coasters. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's limited options. It's not like the Canterbury Plains, which is a big flat area. There's roads everywhere. Yeah, over there you're a bit limited, and it just rains a lot. And for photos, standing in the rain isn't really the best um, no. spot. But there's a lot of little like microclimates around. Mm-hmm. Like, different areas have their own little wee. Like we go to Lake Brunner every year for a holiday, and you read the forecasts, and they're never right for Lake Brunner. But because you've been there so often, you just know like the wind in the afternoon is going to pick up, and it's going to be still in the morning nearly always. Yeah, like it's just. Met service aren't going to tell you what it is, but if you're always going somewhere, or you're living somewhere, you just know what sort of conditions are going to be like. So, yeah, yeah jumping right. back to the ten day thing, I think people also want it's like today's day age of like age of social media and everything, and want like everything now. They want to know what the weather's going to do at the wedding in ten days. Mm. It's like we just can't predict it. Your wedding's going to no. be in ten days. Yeah. It's going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> it's not as bad as like I used to get emails coming through from people saying. You know, I've got a wedding in a month's time yeah. at this location. What well, is the weather going to be? I think I remember like, one. It was like somebody said, "Is it going to snow in, on Barrington Street on this particular day in winter?" Yeah. It's like we don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> mm. But they actually thought it was a genuine question. So, like, chances are probably won't <laughs> yeah. based on probabilities. There's another thing with forecasting. Yeah, probabilities. So you know, you look at your models and you go ten days out, and if it's it's showing like uh, a, a winter type setup, setup, and and it's summer. Chances are it's not going to pull off, you know. Mm. So you can sort of go by statistics a little bit and probabilities and say, you know, that's just unlikely to happen. I'd, psh, I'll scotch that. And, and generally speaking, it unfolds. And Yeah. Yeah. 
Do you, do you have a whole bunch of weather uh, gear at home, uh, or do you just use all of the information off the net, like satellite footage? Or actually, people have asked me that. Where are like, you, you must have a Weather station or something. It's like no, because no, you know, there, yeah. there's um, lots of people that have got weather stations all over the show already. Do yeah. I need to contribute to another weather station? Uh, but in, t- <laughs> in terms of um, chasing and stuff, you know, we've just got generally camera yes. gear, photography gear. Right, we're very limited gear. here. What we use, it's just. Basically, I remember once thing Aaron said to someone who messaged the page, and they're like, oh, how do I get into storm chasing? It's like, mm. well, you just watch the Met Service's thunderstorm outlook, mm-hmm. see when the thunderstorms are, drive out when you, you know, roughly around the time, I think, and just look for the lowest base or the darkest base. Because often our radar... Well, so we do use the Met Service rain radar, mm. um, but it's, de- it's delayed, like, how long is it? Seven, 15 minutes? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. So it is... It's not quite real time, but it is quite close. But yeah. it's also... Yeah. I thought that was to do, to do with the function of the time yeah. it took to process that image, and they couldn't even release it any earlier than seven yeah. months anyway. it could be actually. Could be wrong, but. but also the quality of it isn't as good as what, say, the apps that you can use in America to look at rain radars and the information that it gives you. Mm. So you can sort of see how storms are sort of building or, you know, you've got better data available to you. But here we're sort of, it's a little bit more, it's probably actually harder than in America in a way. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you've got limited data and a lot of it's just your local knowledge of where storms pop up and yeah, and everything. Yeah. But yeah. Ah, fascinating. Do they, do they, are, are the weather forecasts, say in America, would the 10 day forecast be more accurate given they've got a larger land mass? I reckon. Or is that I, not? I reckon it probably could. Yeah, be. I think their trends, it's, yeah. they've probably got more. Like this is just going to be a hot period, and you just know it's going to be hot every day. Yeah. Rather than ours, it's a very coastal and changeable. But then it may depend on where in America as well. Like mm-hmm. if you're on the coast and yeah, Oregon if you've got a big land mass, yeah, it's all kind of the same. Yeah, same weather. Yeah, like this if you're in highly, de- highly predictable. Yeah. yeah, if you're in the middle of the sort of Amarillo in Texas or something versus the coast in Oregon, like mm. Mm. Oregon's probably going to be changeable every day. Mm. But then Amarillo might just be whatever. 90 degrees Fahrenheit every, you know, like, but then they get big strong winds and everything, so it's mm. probably other aspects of weather yeah. that they worry about. So what generally causes the weather to begin with? It's the land mass, the sea mass, and what's going on upstairs as well, right? I often find it's a bit like that bloody song, you know. What are the variables, yeah. <laughs> what's that song like, you know, the lake bones connected to the hip bone, it's like, you know, you can find every reason under the sun and you sort of go around in a big circle and come back yeah. to the beginning and go, uh, yeah, basically you're at the sun that, yep. that provides the energy, the heat. Um, and then you see you've got low pressure systems and high pressure systems and fronts moving through and mm. yeah. I mean, where do you go beyond that? The moon. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> I don't go into those reasons. It's like, it's like, why does that high do that and why does it? Okay, sorry, no. On, you know, La Nina, so uh, yeah. ocean temperatures, yes, that can influence the movement of the, the oh, high yes. pressure systems and yes. lows. I'm not saying 100%, like, but more often than not, if the temperature in the Pacific is, you know, a bit higher than normal highs, tend to move in a certain pattern. Mm. And you get, like, west southwest air flows over New Zealand quite a lot. And, uh, yeah, so, anyway, the sun. Basically, mm. it's the sun. Cool. <laughs> and the, the whole tornado thing, um, that seems to be, like, they, they seem to be, like, the, the real... Like the diamond of the storm hunters. Like, what about uh, the water spouts? Talk me through the similarities or the differences between a water spout and a tornado. Um, are they the same, or are they? They can be the same. They, they can be the same um, processes involved in the cloud, mm. like a mesocyclone, so a supercell. It can occur over water, it can occur over land. Um, yeah, water spout, uh, tornado. But yeah, there are different scenarios where um, you get things called land spouts. It's not the. That's not the same process inside the cloud, it's just a spin up um, I see. I don't really got any better uh, terminology than that. <laughs> no, like, I was like, just like, curious well, well, was When you're at school and you see the I remember in the school, leaves like swirling around, yeah. and, uh, you know yeah. similar, similar whirly whirlies in, uh, in Australia oh, yeah. and yes, yeah, things like that happen and um, people are like, oh it's a tornado and it's like, technically speaking it's not, it's a land spout or something mm. Yeah, I mean we don't get a lot of water spouts around Canterbury Either there was one that um, and for the other day there was quite a large one off Tamaru, off the coast there. Yeah, there was. That's um, right. Which was yep. quite unusual. It was early in the morning, which again, is yeah. not very common here. Yeah. Our friend Laney, yes, cousin Laney, yeah, she took a nice photo of a 
Did she? Water spout, yeah. Off of, uh, you know, the peninsula. Yeah, it was off the coast there one day a few years ago now. Yeah, I can't oh, remember cool. which day. There's too many days. That was in the morning as well, I think, actually. <coughs> yeah, it was, yeah. 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 I think there might have even been a tornado later that day on land, but I yeah, can't remember there the was, damn dates. Yep. There's too many dates. No, there was. <laughs> oh, cool. So, um, yeah, the... That's right. And so where do you reckon the Facebook page, like, I was quite impressed, 32,000 people. Um, and, yeah, it covers such a wide range of weather patterns and things. Um, the other thing that I did notice, which I had to bring up, was, you know, weather has been a little bit politicised these days and people are, uh, you know, you've got your chemtrail people, you've got uh, a bunch of different things going on. Do you ever try and um, kind of control those conversations would you just yeah. take your hands off and sort of step back and go, oh, yeah. go for it guys so it's a bit of a touchy subject for some people but um, I think on the page uh, it creates a lot of division between people Yeah. so in a way while I'm very much into you know everyone can have their own opinions and I don't quite like that like we've all got different opinions and different things but if you're just on there to wind people up or just you know we don't have very good arguments behind what you say and I'm pretty yeah. pretty quick with the old ban button <laughs> um, yeah yeah, I just think it's not worth like big arguments between people. And then potentially you might lose really good people off the page as well. So a lot of people with knowledge who just don't want to have an argument with someone who doesn't have any sort of backing behind what they're saying. But if you got if you bring a good argument, then fair enough. Yeah. And there is weather manipulation that does happen. Like it's not something that's um, there is not in New Zealand obviously, but like in I think China and a few places they do like um yeah clouds sort of seeding to help rain, you know. Yeah. Um I don't think it really works in the long term. I think it's like only for a short term fix. I don't think there's any sort of science to show it will fix droughts or anything. But no. yeah, I think there's definitely like there's a lot of people come on there. Well, someone put a picture up, and then people are like, I've never seen this ever before. It's a new, new phenomenon. And it's like mm. it's been around for hundreds of years. It's nothing new. It's just that you've never seen a photo of it. Mm. And often people just don't want to admit that there's you actually know, that, yeah, it's quite funny because I, I have seen tornadoes. You know, one's gone through Auckland, for example, and I see the YouTube comments and people are like. The second coming is near. Yeah. Gather your family and all this. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, they've it's, been going on for ages. Yeah, it's nothing new. It's like I mean, I remember I go back and read um, archive newspaper articles about thunderstorms in New Zealand, just because mm. sometimes you're on a deep dive on the internet late at night, and you read about like hail killing somebody in a hundred years ago in Christchurch. I think I read somewhere someone got hit by big hail, and then people have been hit by lightning somewhere else. And you know, like weather's been around forever. Yeah, um, I think 1945 was our, one of our biggest tornadoes in recorded history. Yeah, it was uh, went through Hamilton. Yeah, right. and it killed like three people, injured ten or twenty or something, and destroyed wow. a whole lot of buildings and, and stuff. But but then let's think, not talk about that. No, but I think like people just get a bit <laughs> caught. Yeah, people just get a bit caught up on things, and I think post COVID, let's say as well, people have sort of got there. There's always been that mentality. Mm. In the world, yeah. the end of days and night, yeah. and like you get some crazy cloud formation and it looks mystical and otherworldly. Yeah, mm. like I mean, yeah. sometimes I've seen a cloud and it was like perfectly triangled shape, and I was like, that is a little bit odd. <laughs> but yeah. it's good you're the yes. Steve. Yeah, yeah. But then it's like cloaking technology. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> and what are they hiding? What is behind that? Um, but then, like, it's nature. It's going to do things. Like the other day, there's a square cloud popped up on our page, and I left it there. So it's not really severe weather. No. But it'll be interesting to see what the comments are like. Yeah. And I had a bit of a field day, I lifted up for a few days, and then went through and un- unbanned, well, banned yeah. a few people off the page. Yeah. Actually, what I've but seen is, yeah. what I've seen is some high cloud quite often. You'll get high cloud, and the sun is sort of setting in the west or whatever. Mm. And then you'll see like quite a sharp line of bright light, and people are like, holy moly, yeah. how is this possible? Must be aliens, but it's like, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. It's, it'll just be a cloud, like a cumulus cloud, like way in the distance, and it's. As the sun's shining through that cloud, it's blocking off part of the light, mm. and so it shines through mm. in a straight line. And yeah, now nah, that's quite that's, explainable. That's too simple, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, must yeah, be more yeah. than that. Hey, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I noticed something like that where the when the sun's setting in the um, west and the the rays are coming out of the east. Um, I oh, saw. I'm yeah, sorry, I know what you mean. What's yep. the name for that? So I've I've, I've, me, I've got it written down, and it's called Cre. Oh. Cre- crepuscular rays. I was just, oh, crepuscular that, rays. I think yeah. that's, I was yeah. just thinking about that. That's like the, the yeah. sort of the Japanese fingers of God sort of look. Of God's come, yeah, yeah, yeah. The light, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's quite remarkable, and you can kind of see how people have woven superstitions and myth 
and meaning into that because like yeah it's the sky right mm. it's um it's so impressive um lenticular clouds are another one uh they form like over mountain ranges yes and they look like a nice little perfect like pancake sort of oh, pancake yeah. thing and sometimes they're yes. stacked like this and it's yeah. Like, yeah once again cloaking technology like, no, no, no. yeah it's yeah. just a, it's just the weather <laughs> Yeah. There could be a UFO hiding behind the other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I won't just get. Actually, I've seen something very weird once. <laughs> I, I, Tell us all about it. Okay, Aaron. this is when I was nineteen. Yep. And as Steve mentioned earlier, I didn't drive back then because I was a little bit shy. Now I drive; it's fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, back then uh, I lived in South and Brighton, South Shore. Did you ever go there, David? Mm, well, uh, I've been to Brighton and South Shore, but I'm not sure if you went not, to our old place. Not to your place. Radio. Anyway, and uh, I was looking at a thunderstorm coming up over the coast, uh, over Banks Peninsula. Yeah. And uh, my dad had a high eight video camera. Yeah. And, and I was like, uh, I'll see if the lightning's very frequent before I even bother taking the video camera out there. And, yeah, so this would have been 2004, something like that, 2004, 2005. And, yeah, anyway, there was a break in the clouds. And without a word of a freaking lie, I've never seen anything like before but you know plane goes long and it's like doop, 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 like this this is like a half blue half red thing people are like, nuts but I don't want to give it, it was <laughs> yeah. what it was yeah and this thing just like so it was you know, above the clouds but I saw this gap and it sort of came in like this and then there were another two that came in and went <laughs> and shot off like that and I went oh cool what the heck was that yeah <laughs> Like, damn it, didn't bring the video camera. And, yeah. um, no, so, hey, it was an un- unidentified flying object. Yeah. There you go. It was what it was. But I, yeah. I don't know what it was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there is weird, weird stuff that, that goes on. Mm. Oh, totally. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Like, it the unexplained. Secret, yep. secret military projects we do not know about. Yeah, if it didn't, we wouldn't ever have those theories. I think, I think everyone's seen something a little bit strange, um, you know, once or twice in their life. Uh, and that's, yeah, that, that's okay. Um, so filming, would you normally film or would you set up? So tell me about the camera equipment. Like say if you want to take a good shot of um, lightning, what are you, what's required? Um, there's two different ways to do it. One is just use your cell phone and use an yeah. app. <laughs> so basically oh, the, yeah. the lightning, I think it's called oh, wow. lightning camera or something, I don't know. You just basically you turn the app on and it's taking, you can set up a few little settings, but it takes like hundreds of pictures continuously. And then after a lightning, you hit stop and then you go back and you select the photo that you want. So it's basically like a video, but it's breaking up into frames. Yeah. So then you just pick the frame you want and then you save it. That seems to be, well, the easiest way in New Zealand to get them because lightning's Is so... the quality of... You'll stay well yeah, it's not very good quality. Yeah, because like, for social media, it's fine. Social yeah. media is fine. So if you just want to post a photo, photo up there, and you know, mm. which is so Mike's really good at doing that because he's always got his phone out. Me and Aaron have got digital SR cameras, so both shooting Canon, very similar gear. In fact, the identical camera, I think. Yeah, fine. Um, too. Oh, yeah. but still works fine. Old camera. Yeah, like, tech would be 10, 12 years old, but yeah. to be honest, it's still going to do the job fine. Oh, totally. um, and again, we're more into, I guess the photogenic sort of look but you know, real high quality high, images, high quality but so you you're could lugging around out. tripods and getting your camera out and uh, there's okay there's a couple of ways you photograph lighting uh, so at night time mm-hmm. we're just leaving the shutter open set it to bulb setting typically depending on how far or close the lightning is you know you'll tweak the f-stop or um, tweak the uh, ISO google it if uh, People out there don't know what that means. And, uh, yeah, and so, you know, catch lightning that way. Uh, during the daytime, a bit more of a challenge. Um, much harder, yeah. Much harder, yeah. So there is lightning triggers you can get, like, on top of your camera. And it will... Like, lightning, even though it is very quick, it sort of does have a bit of a, like, a... You know, yes. you know what I mean? And yeah. so if there's that initial flash of light that the trigger oh. will... You know, it will trigger your camera... But the problem is quite often you don't get all those leaders and all that dramatic sort of looking stuff. You'll just get the main bolt which connects. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'll get them, but yeah, mm. quite often you just get that main bolt that connects. And then the other way is um, is due to the advent of like massive memory cards, like where you can take thousands of photos and like high quality ones, is you just set up your camera, you put it in the right direction uh, during the day and uh, get your settings all right. And um, typically you want as long a shutter speed as possible because even though lightning is very quick, once again, it's got a little bit of it like, you, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's a, a moment of time. There's a moment of time within yeah. that moment of time. Yeah. And uh, 
yeah, and your camera, you just set it so it's going, ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. it's just going off continuously like that, and then, and then yeah, hopefully you get something if, if lightning goes off. Mm. Mm. The yeah, problem in New Zealand here is often we're out, and it's like one lightning strike, and then it's like 10 minutes later, <laughs> the, yeah. next, the next lightning strike. Well, like yeah. you, the one in front of you, a nice one. Mm. Well, in America, you can just be bang, bang. Right. Yeah, like here we're like, trying to go after like one lightning So we, bolt get, we get a fire right here. Steve's like, yeah. lightning bolt. <laughs> yeah, like I'll go through my camera, like, oh, I'll delete that one, delete that one. It's not very, oh, I'll save that one. Here, it's like, oh, I got one in the corner. I love it. I'll share it with everybody. So it's a lot. And so I think when you see a good lightning shot from New Zealand, like I appreciate it because I know that it's quite yeah. hard. Yeah. In America, you've got to have like a very high standard of, you know, of lightning shot to really get. Yeah. yeah. But digital photography and cameras. Oh, yeah. Just I mean, when totally you can go out and take. Mm-hmm hundreds of photos in a day and it's yeah. go through delete save one yeah well that's nice and easy isn't it it's cool that you've still got the old analog you know camera so uh, well i mean not completely film but you're sort of using a slr or whatever you call it yeah. i used to run yeah. around with a pentax yeah. film camera years ago Did and you? i was trying to like photograph lightning and i just had no luck no luck because you couldn't yeah. review i mean it's so much easier you can review yeah. what you've taken oh crap okay i need to adjust this a little bit like back then you had to wait for it to get developed and that's right yeah i've still got yeah. Um, photo albums of all developed film and yeah. Like when I first so, the, do, you, do you have um, are there any historical photographs of lightning which come to mind? Which you're just like far out. Those guys no. captured something the only one, remarkable. Uh, uh, nothing, nothing that comes to mind. My like favorite lightning shot was my first one. Right, it was like off the coast of uh, Omaru. Yeah, and it's not even like an amazing lightning shot. It's just the first one I captured, and mm. it was like to me, it was probably quite special at the time. Like, the lightning bolt in the photo is like this long, but the whole clouds blue it was at night. It was just real nice conditions oh, and that I got was, printed that was up a good show stay. Yeah, yeah we went down to Omaru and we knew that was coming like four or five days out we are like it's happening it's happening oh, mate. Yeah. we drove all the way down to yeah, Omaru from Christchurch and this we could see this front coming up in the moonlight remember yeah I see, so. and then from just we followed this thing all the way back up to Christchurch yeah I think we got to about uh, just north of Timaru or somewhere in Ashburton and the storm seemed to jump ahead of us a bit because by the time we got to Christchurch there was like hail on the roads, and yeah, we sort of missed it as it got hit. Yeah, but as yeah, no, no historical lightning shots, but just be my own yeah. photos, I think. Yeah. Um, and talk to me about lightning. What's even going on with lightning? Why does it occur? Like, talked about tornadoes. Just like static electricity, really. It's You've got static, a lot of movement yeah. in the cloud, yeah. a lot of friction. And yes, and charge. Just, discharges. Yeah, yeah, that's basically it. How close have you been to a lightning strike? Mm. Steve's been so, oh, I was right there, but Steve yeah. felt like a prickle in the ear or something. I think we're in like St. Andrews. And it was on the storm we were just talking Yeah, about. the same storm. We were outside shooting it and it was sort of, I don't remember if there was a lightning strike nearby. I, don't, I can't remember. I, I think, think it just a flash. off overhead maybe. But my mm. whole body got statically charged and I was like, oh shit, this is a bit too close. And so... Yeah. Um, jump you back know, in the car. You know, very friends up in the mountains. Yeah, mountains is a big the one. The is literally standing on you. Yeah. Oh, it's funny, I was reading a blog the other day about someone being in a thunderstorm in the mountains and they were freaking out and tried to get down. Because yeah. your whole body is statically charged because you're yeah, basically yeah. in the movement and the friction of where it's happening. Mm. It's quite dangerous. I yeah, think, don't yeah. Try, try to get down the ridge to get yeah. away from it. Maybe. But in terms of like the most dangerous, like that one felt, felt it, but I've been in America where we've been. So right under the base of a big storm, and there's just like all well, come CG, so cloud to ground strikes, and they're just like dropping all around us, and it was quite like exciting. But you know that they're a bit close. You know, they're landing in the fields next year, and they're blindingly bright. And everything. what's so, the um, CG? Oh, so it's just you. You got a few different names for lightning. So it's just cloud to ground. Oh, cloud to ground. Yeah, cool. basically. Then you get CC, which is just um, cloud to cloud, and then I think that's in- oh, IC. Yeah, cloud to cloud, yeah. yeah. IC intra cloud lightning. Yeah, there's like terminology. Just so different new world that opens all, up. All the acronyms. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. we use a lot of different acronyms for different yeah. things. And CU cumulin, uh, cumulus. Yeah. CB cumulonimbus. CJ. What's a CJ? Cumulus congestus. Yeah. Cumulus congestus. <laughs> yeah. So there's cumulus, sort of like nice... Nice bubble cauliflower cloud. Yeah, and, yeah. and then you get real big towering ones before it gets to a um, cumulo numbers, which is when the big cloud hits the tropopause, the inversion layer in the upper atmosphere, and it starts spreading out like that. Before right. it gets to that stage, you get cumulus congestus. Right. Yeah, all this, we all find that really fascinating, is like majestic and <clears throat> can have that nuministic quality, like mm. sort of... Yeah. You know, it's like a, a big, spirit, spiritual thing. Yeah, watching a big cloud grow is quite exciting actually rather that than be sort of underneath one in a way because you got this nice big photogenic view of a I remember like storm and one storm we chased um, which is the one Reed Timmer contacted Steve because we filmed a tornado 
around um, Mayfield. And that day, I remember the, the, the you know, start of it was just like a little wisp, I think, and then it just gradually built and evolved into this big thing. And we saw a few funnels that day, and yeah, some tornado came down, and uh, there was lightning there as well. What, what's with that? Because um, I watched that, I saw, saw all these little funnels you'd taken photographs of. Right, yeah, yeah, Is yeah. it 2013 or something? That rings a bell. A bell but that's yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Actually, yeah. that may have been that Mayfield tornado, but um, okay, it looks like a funnel coming down, and basically yeah, it was. Yeah. But there was technically rotation to the surface. You couldn't see the visible yeah. uh, conde- uh, condensation funnel, oh, if you like. So on the surface, yeah, it, 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 oh. it, um, I think it was a few old man pines got flipped over in Mayfield Golf Course. Yes, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. people, yeah, they, they see this current, well, they see that the funnel, and like, oh, you know, what are you guys calling this a tornado for? But technically, if there's circulation on the ground, it's a tornado. Yeah. yeah. So that's what if we you, need. If you hear swirling around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you hear swirling around, start running. But um, yeah, they're definitely. I think yeah, it doesn't have to be all the way to the ground. So one of yeah, our yeah. first funnels were the pass right right over here of us. Uh, we were at Clarkville. When was that? Ooh. Yeah, it was probably two thousand seven or something. Two thousand yeah, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, a little funnel went right over of us, but we didn't feel a damn thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was quite but cool. Was Did you see the whole cloud twisting around yeah, like yeah. a big yeah. corkscrew? Oh, what, what's with that Mount Peel area? Oh yeah, Mount Peel. Yeah, it's like that, the Holy Grail. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, John Gould, the guy I mentioned earlier, he calls that thunderstorm corner. And it just seems to be a place where storms seem to grow out of quite often in Canterbury. Uh, so you've you got the Canterbury Plains, and you know the Canterbury Plains start roughly around Timaru, you know, and they come inland. And I, I, th- I think it's where the winds, they, they come in, you know, Timaru, and they sort of hook around. And they just, that's the first part of the plains where um, yeah, those winds hit, and, and storms just seem to brew out of there. Mm. And, and then they quite often move northwards. There was a, there was a big tornado that went over. Mia, just north of Ashburton. That was like not too long ago. 2018. 2018. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, I did the first live stream yeah. of a tornado in New Zealand's history with that tornado. Yeah. <laughs> on, on Facebook. <laughs> and yeah. Um, but yeah, that that emanated out of that Mount Peel area. And, yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh, quite cool. But at the time, I remember chasing that one and. I got into a certain location and, and I saw the cloud and everything and that thing started to drop and I was like, uh, do I go after it, do I not go after it? Because the problem is New Zealand tornadoes, they only last... Yeah, brief. brief. They're very brief, typically. And, you know, I could get in my car and drive after it and then it, it would have gone by then. And so I was like, do I just take in what I've got where I am? Yeah. But the thing is, that went past State Highway 1 and there were heaps of photos that came out. And, and I, was, I was like, you know, you, you bastards. <laughs> Everyone's got cool photos. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and here's me really, really trying to get something cool. And someone just goes, dunk. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, quite, that's, that's quite often the case with this stuff. And especially as time has gone on, like when we started this whole thing, you know, I'd often be the only guy out there um, taking a photo. And, and that is still the case in some sense. But because everyone's got phones and da 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 But I don't know. The other side of it is uh, that's cool um, as well. To see all that stuff, yeah. So, mm. yeah. So, going back to lightning, if say you were chasing a storm and you were in your car, I've often been told that if you're in your car and you get hit by lightning, you're okay because the car's insulated by the tyres. Is that correct? It's like a wee Faraday cage. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, travels on the outside and you're quite yeah sort of yeah protected inside. probably a safe place to be. Well, it's better, the, the better to be inside your car than outside. If yeah, that no, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of people saying like lightning can come out of clear skies sometimes. Yeah, that's I, true. I don't know like, if that's a myth or not. Yeah, so you, I mean, well, I don't know. Do you mean like, details, but, but like a lightning bolt can shoot a long way from a thunderstorm? So you could be in clear, uh, maybe that's what it you is. You could be looking this yeah. way; it's clear skies, and then ten k's behind. I mean, it has to be some has sort of to be come, yeah, it has that, to come from somewhere. It's not clear sky, yeah. and we don't get it very often. So much here. I think I can give one example. Um, Call it, well, something called like big dog legs that come out. So the lightning bolt, so you've got the cloud, and it shoots out and then comes down. Looks like a dog leg. So it looks like a dog, <laughs> like a leg coming mm. out. But I've chased storms in um, the Northern Territory, so I went to Darwin 2010 for a couple of weeks to shoot their lightning sort of season. And up there you get a lot of yeah, clear air bolts. So yeah, these are bolts that come out of the storm and land, you know, kilometres away from a thunderstorm. Uh, yeah, that, that's um, probably what... Yeah, I mean, there has to yeah. be some science behind, you know... Where lightning comes from, and you need something to create it. So. Yeah, it doesn't come from woo 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 land. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so uh, you can get clear air ones, or out of the blue. I guess that sort of saying comes from. Mm-hmm. 
How's like, the, how, tell us about the anatomy of the chase. When you, the anatomy of when, the chase. When you hear, like, <laughs> you know, you're at home and you hear, you hear some storm coming in somewhere. Oh, normally, yeah, so we say on a chase day. Yeah, night chase before, day. Let's say the night beforehand, we message a couple of friends, look, tomorrow looks good, who's free, we'll meet up somewhere at one o'clock. Let's say we do that, cause typically storms are later in the afternoon into early evening. And then we'll catch up, um, sit around, wait for something to pop up, or we'll drive to an area where it might be. So obviously we're in Canterbury, so all those storms are mostly, we only really chase Canterbury, or maybe to the coast occasionally. Um, and if it's looking like a really good day, we sort of get out a bit earlier, because we're a bit excited. And then we'll sort of wait around for something to pop up, and then we'll sort of chase, you know, wherever we are. Let's say we we'll drive down to Timaru, but then we'll be back to Ashburton because storms have fired up further north, and then before that dies off, and then Timaru is the place to go. So sometimes I look at my Google Maps afterwards, and I'm like, man, we've just gone up and down the same road. Like, if there's a farmer there, he probably thinks, who the hell are these lunatics? It can be critical sometimes yeah. to sort of stick with the game plan. Yep. You know, <clears> there can be like a, a cloud to the north, which looks... Yeah, we've done that a few too many times. Advertising like, or hit alluring, a target. and you're like, no, yeah, yeah, stay with the front or something. And yeah, sometimes uh, you have to stick with the plan, otherwise mm. you can get yeah, um, yeah. And then once you start those. chasing, it's just just chasing until there's zero chance of any more thunderstorms. I think now we're like because we don't get to chase so often, like life's busy and we just mm. don't get a lot of storms. We're sort of like hanging out for that last hope of something. I think there was a earlier this um, storm season, let's say this summer, we. Um, Chased a storm that I think chased dropped like one lightning bolt and Aaron or dropped two lightning bolts and Aaron got one photo of it. So it's like we'll put a lot of dedication into such a oh, tiny yeah, little huge meager. amount of time to get yeah. one flash. <laughs> and really, what does that one photo do? It's like it gets us a hundred so, likes yes. or something, and you know. There you go. But it's um yeah, but then sometimes like a storm, we might not have read the models quite right, but then something will pop up and yep. last minute I'm shooting home mm. from work, grab my camera bag and just shoot out up. Caught up to like um, Kennedy's Bush. Because it's yep. got a good viewpoint across the plains. I yep. haven't got time to drive out. Or um, I, I, I just remember being in, in Littleton once and watching a stubbly front coming over yeah. Gibby's Pass. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, it's just amazing. And you're watching it slowly come across the harbour. I don't know. It's, we all love that. There's something just yeah, it's like like magical really deep about down it. magical about it. And sometimes yeah. our most popular photos on our pages is not actually thunderstorms, but it's just clouds like that, like a big front roll in them. Like it just looks visually very... Quite oh, impressive. I find it like it's the awe and majesty of kind of uh, you know I find it connecting, yeah. connecting into nature or something, or maybe into the core of our own being or something. Yeah, maybe I've seen a few pictures coming up from you know Littleton Harbour there, mm. like Dark Fronts and a few lighting photos. I can't remember who, but yeah, there has been the old one. Over yeah, there. especially yeah. If it comes over the sort of top of the hill, yeah, Gibby's Pass. I think you see yeah, it. Mate. It's quite yeah. a cool spot. So the objective there is to stay like when you're actually doing the chase. Is it to stay ahead of the storm? Yes. Yeah, so Typically. ideally, hopefully the storm's still, and you can mm. just sit there in your nice spot, right. and you just take photos, but that doesn't happen very often. I had no idea, so that can happen. Sometimes storms are storm. slow moving, that's yeah, not ideal. Yeah, slow moving. Yeah. yeah. So, because it can, once the chase is on, and, and, and if things are fairly fast moving, it can be hectic. Yeah. Like, you're in and out of vans, and like, it's, it's real full on, um, mm. but yeah, as Steve mentioned. A slightly slower moving situation is more yeah. ideal because uh, you can take in a lot more and yeah. set up your gear. And you know, if it's fast moving, you're setting up your gear before you know it. Like Rain's bits of up. rain are starting to come in. Yeah, I'm like cleaning the lens every second, and it's, it's real hard work. But yeah, keeping ahead of it, keeping out of that rain, and just a, hopefully a slightly slower moving situation. And um, yep, that's basically it. Right. Yeah. Cool. And you can't take the photograph from inside the van. <laughs> we oh, you do, that. but it's never as good, is it? No. Got an extra bit of glass. And yeah, you extra bit of glass and you've got bits of rain on that. Yeah. And usually I've got like four people in the van. <laughs> you, you, know, you got that slam door rule, like, you know, it's like that situation where you've got ten people running for a doorway. It's like, Ugh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. There's a bit of like brotherhood and camaraderie going on. Yeah. Um, Chase conversions. Yeah, when, when you're in the, in the mode of. When the operation's happening. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, quite yeah. exciting, actually. Yeah. yeah. I think. There can be chase of convergence, they call it. So, <laughs> yeah. like, uh, it's only in New Zealand, it's only happened mm, two, three times in, the, in how many years we've been chasing now, but you'll just be driving out there all of a sudden, you'll go, oh, you know, you'll bump into someone, someone you know. You don't. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll do it. In America, it probably happens. Like, way, well, way America, more like, often. it's the same, chasing's the same. You mm. basically have a target area. The problem there, it'll be five hours drive in the morning to get there. So, and that's a good day. Like, you'd be like, oh, only a five-hour drive for storms today. That's, that's good. We're not, you know. Because <laughs> sometimes you drive all day for the next day. 
Um, yeah. So you do like a thousand k's a day, eight hundred thousand k's a day in America quite easily. Mm. And again, you have massive chaser convergences. So you, you know, storms are going to happen in a certain little area. There's a local town. Everyone just parks up at like a petrol station or somewhere. Then before you know it, a lot of you all just sit in there waiting for storms. And as soon as something happens, <laughs> everyone goes and yeah, you know, you end up sometimes following other people, but they don't know what they're you know, They're going one yeah. way, and you see chasers going the other way on the same road and all sorts of things, but it's just... It's a bit like Twister, Steve. Oh, it's not really like... actually being to America, you just yeah. follow my interest in the weather. I ha- Sorry, I've been to America, but I haven't done um, the chasing thing with Steve has. Yeah. But in, like, the Twister movie, you know, they're all in that, like, diner, and they go, whoosh. Yeah, it's, it's a little <laughs> bit like Twister. I think Twister's quite an iconic movie for... In fact, it's, I think a lot of people join our page because they're Twister fans. Like, mm. it's just... It's a good movie. Like, yeah, there's a new enjoy. Twister coming out. Yeah, it's twist, oh, wow. Twisters, I think it's called. Um, just is, <laughs> just is, mate. But I, yeah, it's a bit of a. I think chases are a bit sort of indifferent about it, but um, yeah. I mean, it's just, I just look at it; it's just a movie. It doesn't need to be correct. Doesn't need. Well, to be I've seen Sharknado. Yeah. I, I don't well, think I've seen this. <laughs> <laughs> is there any other place in the world uh, that people travel to to see storms, like other than America? I think America's definitely. The biggest one, that's the draw yeah. card. Um, Europe, parts of Europe. Parts like, of Europe. It's still a big continent of land mass. Yeah. They get big supercells. I don't know if people travel there, but people within no. Europe will move around, you know. Yeah. Um, Northern Territory, like Darwin, for the lightning. Um, right. It's got big electrical storms. I think definitely people definitely go there. I've been there once, and I know a couple of guys that have been there once or twice as well. Mm. And then I think now people are starting to go to more um, far-flung areas, like Venezuela is another one. Um, for lightning, because they have huge amounts of lightning. There's one particular spot. The name escapes me, but it's a big lake that's there, and they just get crazy amounts. And also, Argentina also gets um, quite big supercell storms. I know it's, notice there's a few Americans that have gone down there. I haven't seen a lot of footage from there, but they're, yeah, they're trying to do more. Australia gets massive storms. Yeah, Australia like gets that. huge they, storms. They've got the energy, they've got the land mass, but we, oddly enough, get better shear probably. Can, yeah, more chance of tornadoes by, here. By that, I mean like wind. Mm-hmm. At different levels in the atmosphere, sort of um, mm. could be more suited for tornadoes, for example. But we just don't have that landmass. We don't have mm. the energy that they have. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to chase more in Australia, but it's almost I'd rather save my money and go to America, where yeah. it's, you're guaranteed yeah. something. You won't, you won't always get a tornado. Like I have been there and not seen a tornado. I think mm. my last trip mm. we didn't. Um, but if you went to Australia and, like, say, you picked a two week little block to go, well, it's a lot more hit and miss. Well, mm. in America, you know there's going to be storms, mm. and even the worst day chasing there is still probably the a better storm than here mm. because yeah. the scale of everything's just huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the locals do they see it as a positive thing? Are they like, hey, cool, there's storm chasers um, here, or are they kind of like this is sort of a form of vulture tourism? No, where oh, there's. I think my interactions anyway is yeah. with locals have been really good. Oh, cool. In fact, a lot of them are like surprised people even do it. Like they call mm. us storm hunters and things. They get really excited. Like you'll meet some rancher out in the middle of nowhere and he mm. wants to have a good yarn to you about everything and tells you he's never left state and things like this yeah. and like really just yeah. different people. Oh, there are actually signs it's because Dan, my dad went to America once um, mm. a few years ago now and he, he visiting someone and he stepped over someone's fence and it said, you know, true spouses will be shot and she was like, don't do that, you'll get shot and all No, this. I, mean, no I, I don't know if it's really I don't think I remember it. talking to this rancher because he that's how he introduced himself. He was the local rancher. He pointed out where all his land was, and a tornado mm. hit here in 1960 something. And like, mm. you know, like a sort of on the centre console, there was a revolver sitting there. And yeah. like, <laughs> so it is a little wild west. But um, mm. I generally think locals quite find it a bit exciting. And mm. also, they then know severe weather is possibly coming. They yeah. ask you a lot, like, well, oh, should I be concerned? Yeah. It's like, well, oh, if you're heading you know, this way, maybe hold off an hour and wait for the storm to pass and this and that. But generally, I think. Um, it's pretty positive. There's yeah. always, you always hear of a few stories of people running into people. And also, it's good for like the local communities a little bit. Like A little town's hotels will fill up for the night for no reason. Like yeah. It'll be dead season, there's nothing going on, and all of a sudden there's 100 chases in town. All the hotels are booked out. Yeah, that's great. So it's quite good for little businesses. Yeah. And The after yeah. parties are extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No, there's no after parties. It's uh, very boring. <laughs> there's no like dark side. The only thing is, after you bag a tornado, you need to eat a steak. That's what you order for dinner. Really? So oh, yeah. you get a t- you have a good day. Where's that from? What, where does that originate from? I actually don't know. No. It's just no. something that's always been a bit of a folklore. I in think. New Zealand, yeah. you go to KFC and get a Twister combo. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get a Twister combo. But um, over the year, steak after a tornado day. Yeah. I think it's like you reward yourself, you spend a bit extra. Yeah. You don't go to the gas station yeah, and buy a burrito. You go buy a yeah. steak from, a, from an yeah. ice restaurant. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. That's, that's fascinating. And like you say, uh, whether you're in America or New Zealand, um, 
Everyone seems to have memories, specific dates, times, when they remember a weather-related event. Like they're like the snow, the hurricane, the what have you. Um, it sort of stays with us in our memory. I mean, you know, we all remember when famous people uh, sort of die or something like that, but it seems like we remember the weather as well. It's like a autism. They say we're all on the spectrum, really. It just depends what level. It's yeah. like the weather, <laughs> like, you know... Most people have got a general interest, you know? Yeah, oh, some totally. People, some people totally. take it to the nth degree. That's great. right. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. of the other things I've always uh, been fascinated by, um, which is weather-related, is how it affects music. And um, I remember watching some documentary about heavy metal uh, in the UK, and then it um, sort of uh, popped up around the world at different times, I suppose. And um, in America and LA, it was a lot more... Like, it was a lot more upbeat and sort of colourful and had a different energy to it than the UK metal. And I think the same can be said for electronica music as well. Certain nationalities, uh, it kind of reflects the weather a little bit, like the German kind of uh, hardcore and the... Yeah, but in, anyway... That Actually, was, I've got a friend who's a yeah. Cytrans DJ. Yeah. And he said overseas, like, he had big gigs all the time. He goes to the New Zealand scenes just... But I mean, you can't be in a field in winter in Canterbury, like raving to your side no, and yeah. you have to take some strong stuff to keep going. But I've often thought about that and how, yeah, it affects. It just affects way more than what we realise. And I can, you know, you growing up in a grey town, your music is going to be potentially. I think affected. it's sort of like the music, like I listen to a bit of EDM sort of stuff, and it's always like upbeat, you know, and it reminds you of summer. Yeah, like it's like the sun, so yeah. it's like electronic. Yeah. There may be like it's a dark, gloomier day. You might be into something a little bit more, yeah. You know, smashing pumpkins or something. You know, like yeah, mate. Even on Monday mornings, we all put different music on in the, in the cafe. You yeah, get the vibe, and you put the music on that yeah. reflects the vibe. I mean, yeah, re- so reflects. Weather, weather has more impact than you probably yeah we on your you know. Do you ever choose a certain playlist for when you're chasing storms? No. Just uh, well, thunder only happens <laughs> when it's raining. <laughs> yeah. Our co- my Not music's really. a bit collective. No, yeah, it's all over the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually the radio's off. No, nice. just Actually, the, the, the radio station of choice when Thunderstorm Chasing is the AM yeah. uh, station, and you, you tune it to some part of the frequency range where there's not really much going on, and when lightning goes off, it'll go... <laughs> yeah, the spherics. <laughs> spherics and stuff oh, yeah. like that. Yeah. And yeah. it affects the radio waves, and so you hear a little... <laughs> and depending on the strength of the... <laughs> Oh, it's close. Yeah, it's kind of like a little simple way to chat. Like, it kind of takes you back to the simplest things, like yeah. listening to the crackle of the radio. Like, you don't totally. do it very often. <laughs> like totally. It's a, yeah. 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 And also, when you're filming, if you were to film a video and you had the radio on, and then you were to put it on YouTube, let's say, there's copyright issues. So I'd like to have the radio off if I'm ever taking video, just in case it, well, I mean, mm. the, the likelihood of actually having something decent enough to go mm. viral, let's say. But if they a lightning bolt struck right next door to the van... Well, then you'd want the radio off just in case, you yeah. know, Kylie Minogue's playing or something, and then, you know, <laughs> they come yeah. after you and tell you you can't Storm monetize Storm does not endorse Kylie Minogue. <laughs> and we did not listen to her, so <laughs> I don't know why she came to mind. Yeah. Um, I, I have another story about uh, lightning, um, which I always thought was a myth, but my sister was on the phone during a storm, and she received an electrical shock through the phone. Oh, and it was a decent one. Yeah, yeah. It uh, had her on the ground. Oh wow! Right. Yeah, I and and I've never. I don't. I don't know how that works. Presumably, the old copper line. Yeah. And is she country this, this based. This was or? yeah, yeah, yeah. Out in the country. Right. Um, yeah. This was uh, been 20, 30, You know, 40, 40 years ago, I'd say. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, that's definitely possible. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I don't know. It was just one of those things that I yeah, always yeah. thought was a bit of one of those things. Yeah, until I saw her picking herself up off the <laughs> kitchen floor. <laughs> Far out, yeah. What are you doing down there? I was amazed with um, Terence McKenna. He's got a saying: "Self similar across scale." And I was, I was thinking about the lightning. How it all goes out into a, into a, like a venal system, and like you get that in, in geology, you get the venal system going through the rocks or in our body. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. Just the um, same forms, just just in the different. Um, it's almost like when lightning hits um, the beach. Sometimes you get this like <laughs> pattern. Yes, yeah, the pattern's just just created again yeah, and yeah. again. Mm. What's, what's that called, Steve? Oh. Lightning hits sand in it. There is a name. 
It turns it to like rock, basically. Wow. Actually, there was a, a particular cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. There's a few things that like, I remember. I saw this art expo thing. It was just on the internet somewhere. And a guy had these um those long is it fluorescent tube lights, and he had them in the ground. I mean, there's a lightning storm over the static electricity made them sort of glow a little bit. I yeah. don't know how he did it, but there's mm. like electricity in the air and everything with, yeah. the, with the storms. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of yeah. Yeah, Someone tried to do an art thing on the coast as well with lightning wanting to hit rods to melt thing, melt rocks and sand. And we got interviewed for that, and it never, yeah, it never appeared anywhere. <laughs> no, we did actually TV three, I think. Um, yeah, so there's definitely yeah, people are quite fascinated about it. And mm. oh, very good. <sighs> fulgurites, fulgurites. All oh, right. Yep. Yeah, it's when it melts the sand into basically glass. I think in Arizona and places in America, they people go out and look for them and. And find these strange, yeah. and there's that weird like, or, uh, like ball lightning, yeah, and all sorts of actually dad, odd, uh, odd things like that. My dad um, was in a hotel in Sydney years ago, and he swear I like once again, <laughs> uh, maybe there was no. Nah, anyway, he reckoned ball lightning came um, very close to him in in, in, in Australia once uh, out of some thunderstorm, and he said that it was a crazy experience, and it sort of zapped around the room, went poof, and like. And, and I know that sounds weird, but in, inside the room, he reckoned wow. it came inside the damn room. Oh mate, if in that's Australia, what you saw. yeah, it's, it's, it's possible. Electricity, I've, something maybe. Yeah, I know. yeah. I know it sounds weird. Not sure, but no, no, it's I not like he's ever seen that again. I had a friend who was in no, Argentina or somewhere in, up in the mountain. There was like ball, no, ball, balls of light coming down the mountain. Right, right. So it was you know, pretty freaky. Crazy. It's freaky stuff happens, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's part of nature. We mustn't sort of always discount it. No, yeah. they always discover new things as well. Like that's especially right. with tornadoes yeah. and everything as well, like how they even form and uh, multiple vortices. I remember looking in the... It was on the front page of the press a few years ago, and it was like this old lady, and she's from Queenstown, and she's, she said that she's lived down there all her life at the top, maybe up near Glenorchy or something. Mm-hmm. And, and the picture on the front page was like this huge cloud bank up above a mountain. And it, and it had her look, standing there looking at it, sort of puzzled. And she said, I've, I've never seen these clouds like this in all my life. And there's a sort of intimation that things are, things are all changing and the world's going to end. That's a yeah. sort of intimation. The other the thing article, is, like, but, when, yeah. the weather, when the weather looks rough, what do people, most people do? She's looking a bit rough, you know, I'll get inside. <laughs> the, the few times they are outside, you know, if they actually spend a bit of time and looking at the clouds, they might see something they otherwise wouldn't see. Well, yeah, we see true. a lot of funnel clouds there. Yeah, true. Like funnel, cl- like funnel clouds is a pretty minor thing. It doesn't impact anyone, but we often see them in storms, which no one else will see because we're staring at the clouds the whole time. Yeah. yeah. So while one person might take a photo of a funnel cloud and thinks it's a rare thing that's happened, in, but actually mm. it mm. probably happens most thunderstorms really mm. yeah. Um, yeah they get to a decent size but we're always just staring at the clouds so we just see a bit more than what other people see mm. yeah. oh well keep doing it guys keep doing it um, and I've joined the Facebook group um, and I love looking at all the photographs and uh, I love also seeing what else is in the pictures and stuff quite often it it seems that there are people's cars and things. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. a little snapshot of Kiwi life as well, it is. as well as the weather. And it's a snapshot <laughs> of how people take photos. I'm like, just keep it level. Like, what has your phone? Like, just or the yeah. telephone poles is a big one. Yeah. Tele- you know, power poles. Yeah, um, that is in every photo. Every good photo has a power pole in it. Yeah, it kind of gives it context. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not it's a good nice. photo if it doesn't have power lines. It can yeah. give, you, give you different ideas because you know I may have an idea about how I want to photograph something mm. and someone. Often ladies, they're a bit more creative yeah. um, in, in their photos. And yeah, they take more photos. Well, hey, well, thanks for coming in and uh, right. sharing with us uh, all your knowledge and information about uh, the weather-related events in New Zealand. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Cheers, Enjoyed guys. It.